New cycling paths will be coming to seven more towns here in Singapore. The Land Transport Authority is kicking off the next phase of its island-wide cycling network project by adding another 55 kilometres of cycling routes. Now, slated to complete next year, this will bring the government nearly halfway to its target of 1,300 kilometres by 2030. For these seven towns, it's a promise of greater connectivity to amenities within and around their neighbourhoods, like schools, community centres and bus interchanges. The new cycling paths will line streets from Geylang to Marine Parade, Potong Pasir to Sengkang. It's part of a wider push by the government to support green commutes and active lifestyles. We all know that the, the country's vision you know, of car light that we are, we are moving ahead to. Uh, also, we are talking about promoting active mobility, you know, uh, asking people to use more of the active mobility devices for their first and last mile commute, that kind of thing. So with all this infrastructure, it will definitely help to enhance this part of what we have been talking about. LTA has called for a tender to construct the new cycling paths. It says existing footpaths may be widened to create more space for walking and cycling. Road spaces may be repurposed and facilities like drains, bus stops and staircases adjusted. These would ease congestion and reduce the need for cyclists and pedestrians to jostle for space. But reactions are mixed among town residents. Maybe as a cyclist, I think you will be like, it's good because we have more spaces for like maneuvering. But as a resident, I think you'll be very noisy and doesn't really benefit to me. So it's like a half-half, 50-50, I believe. The construction has to happen. I think it should be okay. So as long as the area is done, I think it will also help the community. You know, everyone's going to be happier. There's going to be both sides for, you know, the passerby and also the cyclists. LTA will also be adding support infrastructure like bike crossings and wheeling ramps, plus another 3,000 bicycle parking lots at MRT stations by 2025. And for more, we're joined by Dr. Cecilia Rojas from the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Dr. Rojas, we just heard the VP of the Singapore Cycling Federation say these, uh, this addition of uh, cycling routes will enhance uh, Singapore's a vision of car light. Now, uh, extra 55 kilometres with 1,300 by 2030. How much a part of this car light move do these cycle... How, how much do they actually contribute to Singapore's move to be car light? Well, um, this addition of cycling path is certainly great news. Uh, I won't be able to give you a number, but it will certainly have a positive impact as some or hopefully more people, uh, majority of people would choose to cycle or even walk instead of using motorized modes of transport. And that would push towards a card light society. It might also generate new active trips like new walking and cycling trips because of this increased connectivity, hence having an overall um, increase in active mobility rate. Dr. Rojas, along with expanding this network, we want to be able to see improvements in intertown active mobility connectivity as well, because people need to be able to get to the next neighborhood safely and quickly. Do you see sufficient synergy and speed with the progress on this front? Uh, well, thank you so much. That's a great question. Actually, uh, we already know that uh, towns and neighborhoods around in Singapore are uh, quite well connected. So having the cycling pass will certainly, as I just mentioned, create a new trip, encourage people to go around, explore the nearby neighborhood. And these facilities and this cycling path will uh, improve this connectivity for sure. Of course, we heard uh, from... Uh some people on the ground before we cross to you, one of them saying, I think it will be very noisy as a resident. I don't think these cycling paths will really benefit me. It's half, half, 50-50, I believe. Uh, there will be some trade-offs uh, when we push for increased cycling networks. Uh, do you think these trade-offs are fair and what might they be? Uh, well, um, of course, we will have different opinions in uh, what's going to be more benefit for us. During the transition process specifically, there might be a lot of trade-off, and here is where we'll have to be careful that we all have a little bit of patience with other road users getting used to the actual usage of space. 
Um, overall, I think the benefits in the longer term will be better for the overall society because of the benefits of walking and cycling. And we'll have to learn to coexist with the different modes and we'll have to become more aware of all the positives that we can have from walking and cycling and the increase uh, overall cycling network and cycling paths. Oh, thanks so much for joining us this evening, Dr. Celia Rojas from the Singapore University of Social Sciences.